namaskar again to all the uh, viewers who are over here today uh, from this uh, wonderful destination where i am sitting at present uh, this is the new chamta tea estate which was established in 1866 and you know this place is surrounded by the beautiful uh, forest of sukhna which is now the mahananda wildlife sanctuary known for its tigers leopards elephants uh, and the several forest villages which are here uh, so i'm sure all of you who are uh, listening to me or seeing me on the screen would love to visit this during your first visit coming over here uh, taking off from here i would uh, i would just uh, tell you a little about the east and northeast part of that is north bengal and the northeastern part which amitabh had just told you that i would be sharing my experience to uh, all of us who are here uh, the basic place where everybody is worried you know everybody is saying all the industry leaders you have heard them they are all you know uh, disturbed with the uh, with the entire uh, situation of covid 19 uh, all of a sudden uh, everybody is saying you know travel has stopped completely uh, the travel industry is the worst hit but one thing all of us have to understand that you know travel is not a optional element for for the human being travel is an essential element for the human being because as your body needs food in the same way for your mind to stay living for your mind to you know to grow you need to travel so it has always been you know for human beings to where we are today travel has been the biggest contributors maybe your classrooms your schools your colleges have taught you a lot of things within the four walls but you cannot transform that into wisdom until and unless you don't travel and that is the reason in every religion you have been asked to go for pilgrimage tours that is tirth yatra we never talk about destination we talk about you know tirth yatra so this yatra this travel is so very important and we have to understand that where it comes from the word itself about travel comes from this uh, from this eastern region from this east northeastern region if you go back to the rigveda you will find the word bhramon being used the brom brom on being used that is Uh, you know the learning of human beings to travel beyond physically travel outside and whenever you cannot travel outside then you travel within so this brahman is is a practice you know which all of us in the east have done it through this pandemic period even even when we couldn't travel outside we travel within and we started learning ourselves so that was the basic of travel where it comes from the from the vedas it comes from from the one of the oldest cultures that has been there with us so this region has given travel you know uh, as, as a as a boon to the mankind when we go back uh, you know to the to the buddhist culture we we have seen that how buddha himself has asked his monks his disciples to travel from one part to the other how to how to keep traveling accepting this monsoon period which is what is known as barsa bas where you know during this monsoon retreat the monks used to come back to used to share their you know their knowledge and everything but the rest of the year you know nine months of the year they used to travel so this was this has been always mentioned you know into the different books and later adapted into the five famous buddhist universities from this eastern region which we find in you know in bihar orissa bengal and some parts of bangladesh uh, why i say you know when you talk about the north bengal and north eastern region if you look at the map of india you will find that it is connected through a 13 kilometers chicken's neck that means with our own country india the entire region is connected less than uh, you know 15% of the area whereas the 85 to 88% of the area is actually uh, with internationally connected land linked i would say it is not land locked lock but it is land linked so we are adjoining to you know to tibet we are adjoining to bhutan we are adjoining to nepal we are adjoining to bangladesh we are adjoining to myanmar so anything any of these countries that you think about any of this very famous uh, you know heritage countries which has provided their traditions and the heritage of asia they have all come together in this north bengal and the northeastern part of india this is this is where we come from this is where you know the tourism starts over here so this heritage is something uh, what we have adopted in our life so each and every community which lives here there are uh, you know more than 400 sub tribes which live in this region and and believe it or not they all are from different origin some some have their cultural links or cultural origins into myanmar 
and some have it in Tibet, some have it in Bhutan and some have it in Bangladesh and some in Nepal. So, you know, this entire different communities from across the region has come together to form this North Bengal and Northeast, which is uh, the unique character culturally for the, for the entire Northeastern region. And, and where do we get this culture from? We get this culture from the backyard biodiversity. Today, we talk about the famous, you know, uh, the, bi the biodiversity hotspots. We talk about, you know, uh, the protected areas, the national parks, the, the tiger reserves, you know, uh, the wildlife sanctuaries. So all these have been basically protected by the communities themselves. And how it has been protected, these communities, they adopted a culture of biodivinity. In spite of having different religion, you will find that this region is a region where people believe in nature. They believe in the, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the basics of nature. That is, they believe in the mountains, they pray to the mountains, they pray to the rivers, they pray to the forest. So that is where their, their religion comes from. And maybe mistakenly, uh, for a very long time, for almost about 200, 300 years of the colonial rule, when they couldn't understand the people of this region, they just told them, you know, they are animists, they are tribals, but they are the people who are the, you know, the protectors of sustainability. Each and every community in this region uh, is, is a classroom of sustainability. And hence, each and every homestay that we have with the local communities over here are the, are the centers of sustainability for sustainable learning. When the entire world, you know, all the countries have signed the uh, SDG, the Sustainable Develop Development Goals, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. It is here that we are already practicing this sustainability. So where better in the world can you travel and learn sustainability? This is a part of our culture. This is a part of our, you know, of our life and lifestyle. All that we invite you is to come to this region to learn this sustainability from these people, not by just by looking at them, seeing them, or taking photographs of them, but sharing their lives with them. Uh, you know, uh, we have a very old Guru Shishwa culture. And in this Guru Shishwa culture, as Amitabha and my, myself, we have always been discussing, you know, all these people who are practicing sustainability through their music, through their lifestyles and everything, they, they become the teachers, they become your gurus. And each and every of the house or each and every of the places where you're staying with them, they become Guru Vas your places where your teachers, you're living with your teachers. So you, it is not that you are coming and touring. You are immersing yourself into a region. You are immersing yourself into, into a concept from where you can teach the world the sustainable lifestyle. This is where, you know, it has to start from. When we say 74%, we just heard our uh, regional director, Sagnik Ji, is talking about 74% of our lives life lives in the villages. Which, and, and you know, all our so-called uh, development, uh, you know, masters, starting from Rabindranath Tagore to Mahatma Gandhi, all of them have talked about, you know, rural development as a core. So when we talk about rural development is, as a core, this is an opportunity. This year, this particular day of, you know, uh, World Tourism Day or Vishya Paryatan Divas, as we call it, this is something what is a very well-meaning day for all of us today because this is the day when UN WTO declares that tourism and rural development, Paritan and Gram Vikas, you know. So this, this Gram Vikas, which is coming through tourism, is a, is a completely new concept for the entire world, which India has been practicing for years and centuries within the communities because we always believe you know, Atiti Deva Bhava, we always talk about how guests have been our God in our tradition. So, you know, how long this practice has been with the country. And this is what, you know, the entire East and Northeast, that is North Bengal and Northeast, has preserved for so many years. So, Amitabha, this is an opportunity when we can invite the world to come and stay in our Guruvas, the, the, to stay with the masters, to learn from the masters, and not just come and photograph and see and, you know, and go back with good memories, but go back with sustainable leaders, go back as sustainable leaders, go back as sustainable human beings to be you know, contributing to this world. So this is how we look forward to North Bengal and Northeast. And this is the reason why North Bengal and Northeast is so very needed for this time of COVID-19, you know, where, you know, people uh, can find themselves 
in nature. People can find themselves uh, into, the, into their surrounding environment. And they do not have to be frightened with, with a small little COVID because here people have learned how to, how to live beyond their ego, which is the major thing which has been learned over here because it is the ego that frightens us every time because we do not know how to travel inside. The, the time we start learning how to travel inside, which our Vedas have taught us, which now our North Bengal and Northeast can teach us, is, is the time for this pandemic situation. So let's not live in the BC, that is the before COVID period, but let's live new normal into North Bengal and Northeast, being sustainable human beings and going back to our traditions of the Vedas. Uh, thank you. This was an invitation. This is a small little invitation for me, and I'm sure all of you with Bangla Nato Association for Conservation and Tourism and the Ministry of Tourism Government of India would certainly like to visit North Bengal and Northeast in immediate future. Yes, thank please. You much. Thank you. Uh, as you spoke beautifully about North and Northeast, now let me try uh, talking about the southern part because as you know, we have been working on the art and culture. Uh, of uh, in Bengal as well as many parts of India. And you know, what we see is very interesting for the last 18 years, 20 years, what we see is that tourist visitors, when they come here, they bring the pride and the economic benefit to the villagers, to the artist and the neighborhood. But, and also the pride, that's very important, the recognition and the pride. But what they take back is essentially a lifetime experience. And that cannot be ignored. So it is not just seeing a particular tangible heritage. If you look at the UNWTO um, uh, data, UNWTO repeatedly mentions that out of 1.4 billion people traveling from place X to Y, almost 38 to 40 percent actually travel to experience people's life. And I think India is a gold mine and West Bengal is truly, and also the nearby neighboring states are gold mines in that. I mean, if we uh, see that, uh, how to, in, in particularly in India, there are villages where substantial number of artists live. And from art and culture based tourism development, that is an ideal place to develop tourism. But that tourism is the nucleus of that tourism is basically the community. So I think that's an orientation that also needs to be brought in because uh, we have been seeing this that you know it is not only just a room or just a, a toilet of the room it is decent and it is excellent home cooked food but it is more than that it is actually seeing going through the experience of another lifestyle knowing the unknown and as you rightly pointed out there is honestly no such a, I mean, situation of Corona in any of these villages across India. I travel even in this period from May onwards. Every damned place is absolutely clean. So this impact uh, is much less there. And I think people, as I fully agree, people will travel because without travel, it is not possible. And uh, so with this, I, I think, uh, mm, uh, another very important part is that, you know, traditional art form safeguarding and also the next generation passing. When the pride comes back, it comes. But mm, as we have uh, a time thing, I think uh, right now uh, the best would be that uh, I'll request Potir Ghan. Pingla is a wonderful place. And, uh, but before that, let me show you a small uh, photographs. Uh, and I think, uh, show them if you can bring the photographs and I'll keep on. So this is... Potochitra Ram, uh, Pingla, and here uh, uh, there were only eight artists in 2004, and now there are almost 300 artists, 103 families. And this is a beautiful resource center West Bengal Khadi has developed. And there is a, a museum, community museum, as well as there is, uh, there are, uh, the first floor is actually artist stay. And a lot of visitors, they keep on coming, and we have seen last two years, it is more than 20,000 to 22,000 visitors coming and almost 1,500 international. And Potachitra Village holds their annual festival in November, although we do not know whether this year we will be able to hold it, probably not, but the 10th edition was last year. 
Next to Bhattachitra village, there is another beautiful village, Shabong, the place for Madurgati. And this is both are in Pushti Medinipur, which is hardly two and a half hours drive from Kolkata. And one must see them. And this is the team from Maldives visiting. So, you know, this is, and also at the left, there is another one. This place is another theater village, the Pantor, which is in Bordoman. And here, there are places for 150 people, uh, 180 people, sorry. And there is the uh, Kollal Bhattacharya and 22 local boys, they have developed this. And it's a four acre campus, wonderful. This is a place where one can stay, one can have an exchange collaboration, co create, do their own thing, as he was mentioning about Guru Bas. And also, a lot of international people come here and they really enjoy this beautiful Green Lash campus. And this is a wonderful place to spend time. And uh, this is a Baul Ashram in Bonnabogram near uh, Aushgram. And this is getting developed. This is almost ready. And there's a beautiful pond in it. And uh, also the place for organic farming. And just next door from Shantiniketan, within 30 minutes, there is a Nanur Kata hub. And the Kata is a stitch. So this is ideal for people who are looking for 600 women working on Kata. And that is a fantastic place to visit. And Udendal village is also at Notumbram. That's another important place. Dokra Bikna, that's in Bakura. And Dokra also attracts a lot of visitors. People want to see the process of Dokra. It is the age old process uh, and uh, how it is done. And uh, it's there, there, there is also a community museum and West Bengal Khati has developed, again, a very good uh, resource center, come museum and everything. There's the Purulia is famous for Cho, and this particular village, Chorida, has evolved as a cultural tourism destination and where the mask makers live. Next uh, uh, is again the Chorida, you can really make the mask, you can see, you can buy, you can interact. Next to Chorida, there is a Cho village called Balorampur, and this has evolved as almost an academy. And here, the Guru Jagannath Choudhury and uh, his daughter, Moshumi. It's a female, and uh, she's one of the first female Chow dancers. And you know, and they have come up, and this particular resource center is also developed by West Bengal Khadi. And so they are also becoming very important. Coming to next door, Jharkhand, as you know, Purulia bordering Jharkhand, there's a place called Nimdi Gandhi Ashram. Here, it's a 20 acre campus, and uh, people can stay, 300 plus uh, accommodation, and people do come there often for different, different gatherings and they really enjoy. And the organic farming there is very big and almost three acres of campus is dedicated for organic farming. Uh, there's an Australian uh, group, uh, Bangara, uh, who came there for uh, collaborations with the Chow teams and keep, uh, different collaborative people come. So like uh, Raj mentioning Guru Vas, uh, this is a wonderful place. Folk Holi is celebrated in Nindi uh, campus big time. And this is a very, very, this has evolved as a very popular place where people can stay at the hash arts as well as uh, in the uh, completely eco-friendly uh, uh, things. So, you know, this is how uh, it looks like. And uh, Fokoli is also celebrated big time uh, in this area. If I go to Orissa, Raghurajpur Patachitra, that's another wonderful place. Once you go to Puri, you will see at your left, it, will, it is uh, there. And their Patachitra style is also wonderful. And, uh, and both have, are GI now. And so this is, again, uh, one can really experience how uh, people do this. And one can compare Pingla Patachitra and uh, Raghudajpur Patachitra. What's the difference? Uh, the temple colors are used, how that is done. And that is uh, another uh, fantastic way, Raghurajpur. Come to Madhubani, north of Bihar. And this is again, uh, this started as a wall painting. And uh, uh, how this is being done here, it's a big area, almost 600 plus artists live in Shatbara, uh, uh, then Rathi, Jitwarpur. And in the same Madhubani, there is also a grass like Shaba, it's called Shiki. And that Shiki, uh, is uh, used for different uh, handicraft uh, uh, elements. And uh, Sikhi is uh, used by the artists. There are uh, al almost 200, 300 Sikhi artists there. That's another beautiful place. And of course, 
you cannot ignore the Darbhanga Rajbari uh, in that uh, particular place. So in a nutshell, I wanted to talk about South Bengal and the neighboring places, neighboring districts, uh, neighboring states, uh, especially Bihar, Odisha, and Jharkhand. And with this, as I have started showing, talking about Pingla Potachitro, I think that's a wonderful place where people use natural color and they do singing. And uh, let me invite Shorna Chitrakar and her daughter, uh, Sonali Chitrakar, joining us straight from Pingla. Uh, Shorno and Mamuni will be showing us. Shorno, to me, I Gandhi a Shuru Karu. Shorno. Namaskar, I am Shorno Chitra Karu. My name is Gusti Medhikuran Kotua. I am Shonali. I am Shonali Chitra Karu. I am Shorno Chitra Karu. I am Shorno Chitra Karu. I am Shorno, thank you, Shunali. Uh, pot, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Potochitro. Potochitro, as you see, it's a frame by frame and singing. It's a wonderful, it's like the before television, you can see frame by frame. Shorno, I'm ready to natural color workshop. They go. So, you know, they make uh, all different colors from different uh, uh, vegetables. So, I think that's something really. Uh, uh, people go there to learn uh, and also to take part in the. Shana, if you can see how you can see the wrong way. Oh, so this is lot corn which makes it red. Okay. Oh. The friends, uh, you can see Shonali actually uh, uh, rubbing the lot corn and see how the red color is coming out. Yes. Right, right, right. Thank you, thank you. Uh. Okay. okay. Good. Oh, So you get orange from Gada food. Acha. Okay. Our friends, you must be uh, understanding that all these colors that you have seen in the Potochitro are all natural colors. So this is a skill. And so this is really a skill based on which Potochitro village is evolving. That's why Sharno uh, and Shunali they are showing which color. Acha Sharno, I want to ask you this gulo. Okay, uh, so what Shauna is saying that whoever is going actually can see these uh, vegetables, these trees, these leaves, these flowers, and they take them around. What I was talking about, the experiencing the real uh, uh, art. It is not just observing the art, it is rather experiencing the whole thing, collecting, seeing which tree gives you which color, which leaves gives you which color, 
and then uh, extracting that color and then learning making potato from them. Wonderful. Arki dakhabe shorno. Right, it's a blue, huh? Wow. Shorno, I, 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 tomorrow, ki photo chitro chara ar ki ki koru. Photo chitro chara sex party, 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 photo so what Shana is mentioning, they have done uh, the other than the 20 feet scroll that you've seen, uh, other than that, uh, square pots are also there, which you can frame. There are a lot of diversifications, uh, uh, starting from Sari to Dopatta to different, different other places where they pot make potochitro and also on the wooden stuff and also on glass. Uh, very good, very good. And uh, uh, friends, uh, they are, I showed you the resource center from outside. This is the inside of the resource center. Actually, this is the first floor. And from there, their life. And a uh, lot of visitors go there, about 20,000, 25,000. And that's why you have visitors visitors. Jai. Okay. Our, uh, uh, their Mela is usually on the third weekend of November. Only this year we don't know, but uh, uh, till last year they had celebrated 10th years and it's done by Chitrotoru. They are clustered. So they organize this and Sharno is one of the leaders, the real leader. And Sharno has been to almost all countries in the world. And uh, I remember uh, Hillary Clinton came to Calcutta once. And Hillary Clinton wanted to meet Shorno. So that is something I will never forget in my life. Shorno, to me, how I get to meet Kodacho? Hillary Clinton, to me, meet Kodachile. Ah, okay, okay, okay. And also, uh, United Nations Resident Commissioner also visited. Unioto Gachile, Toma de Brame, Kichudin Agi. UNESCO South Asia Director of Gachile. Okay, wonderful. So, friends, uh, that's from uh, directly from Sharno and uh, Shonali. Don't uh, You know that uh, after this entire journey that we have had, almost more than half half a week of this webinar that we are having today by India Tourism, it is so very important to understand the cultural aspect because a lot of us talk about culture so often. We often throw this word here and there. You know, this is this is cultural degradation and this is cultural restoration. We talk about this word, but how in rural India, it has been so very important, you know, uh, to take forward this cultural, uh, cultural part of rural tourism forward and, and how best can, uh, you know, people can experience this kind of culture in rural India and who better than you can explain this entire uh, cultural tourism portion into uh, rural India, please. I mean, if you can please uh, speak in details about it and how Bangla Natak is working on it, please. Thank, thank you, Raj. Uh, before I speak, let me uh, first invite the Rai uh, Raibeshe is wet team is waiting in Murshidabad and uh, uh, the diesels have started in Murshidabad. So that's why it's very important that we bring in them first. Uh, it's a short performance. There are 18 Rai groups. And uh, Murshidabad, Bardhuman, Birbhum, you see them. Here we have invited uh, one of them, Gopal Sharkar, he's the leader. Ebon Gopal uh, uh, is ready with his team. Gopal's team has traveled to Czech Republic also and is a fantastic performer. And I'm sure uh, for all the viewers, Gopal Sharkar's Rai Beshe team directly from Daulat, Daulatabad in Murshidabad near Barampur. Gopal. West Bengal, total authority, Raibeshe Dolache, Apna Shavai Asun, Achkir, Amadir Shishti Dolet, Raibeshe Nito de Kun. Hold, 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 music. Music, Bada. Thank <laughs> you. 
Scott! Wonderful, extraordinary performance of yeah. Rai Vishi from Sir, Thank you, Amitabh. Thank you very much, Bangla Natak. This, this wouldn't have been possible without your uh, interference and without your involvement. You know, Raj, you know, that's why before speaking about cultural tourism, I decided that let me show Rai Vishi. Because it is important to understand that tourism was more of tangible heritage based. Intangible heritage-based tourism, very sporadically people were working on. But UNWTO actually launched intangible cultural heritage-based tourism only in 2015 yes. at ITB. And you will be surprised. Our case studies were shared and I was a keynote speaker in ITB on behalf of UNWTO for that ICH-based tourism where I showcased Potochitro, Baul, and Chow. And this is a skill. Intangible cultural heritage is a skill. Now, tangible heritage-based things, it's like monument, like fort, like temple, mosque, whatever. But intangible is all about people. And so that's why when people come to any of such villages, it's very important that they experience. And you see Gopal in Murshidabad, he's a pioneer because he has brought again, this is the first time he has brought women. And you must have seen this for the first time, women in Raibeshi. So this is a very, very interesting form. And this is something that I thought that we must show. And many people all over the world, like you talked about Guru Bash here, People can come for residency, workshop, collaboration, and co-create. That is the ideal thing. Art lovers, general tourists, visitors, it is for experiencing the lifestyle and experience the art, learning it if need be. So workshop, demonstration is very, very important part. And also, as I mentioned that time, that you know, it brings pride. It brings economic benefit. But it brings pride and recognition not only to the village or the artist, but also to the neighborhood. I have seen how the local panchayats have come forward to make their roads. See, it's been journey, it's almost our Bangla Nato journey is 20 years plus. This Art for Life journey is almost 15 years plus, 16 years rather. And so that has been a wonderful way that, you know, even the local neighborhood that come forward because they know the importance of tourism and uh, uh, um, uh, visitors coming here, and that brings a lot of uh, a thing. Also, it motivates the new generation. You've seen all young. You know, it motivates the new generation to pick up. Because if I make something, 
nobody is interested. I am not given any recognition. I don't get any economic benefit. I leave that and go back to the unskilled daily worker. But if my own skill, if my own family traditional skill gives me the pride and the economy, in that case, uh, the most important part is I'm very, very happy in my own village doing this. And, you know, like in the COVID time, there has been so much talk about migration because we have seen the migrants have faced a huge difficult time. But out of the 36,000 rural artists that we work and all the neighboring villages, none of them, none of them migrated from their village in last 15 years to any other place. Now that means they were happy. They are happy. And that also reduces the vulnerability towards unpleasant things, including human trafficking. And this allurance of other things, because if people are happy, contained in their own village, then they will stay back. And if they have something, and it's their own skill, it is not an outside imposed skill. Only thing they need is capacity building, linking them directly to the market, and also exchange collaboration. And tourism also gives an opportunity of exchange collaboration. And this safeguards the art form. That is another very important part because the new generation coming in. So this is, I thought that I will share with you on this. And uh, uh, now uh, I think uh, it's, uh, I will uh, request you to uh, speak about a little bit on responsible tourism. Yes, very little true, very true. Responsible. Yes. Yes, yes, very rightly said. Uh, yes, uh, Amitabha, when you, when you talk about, you know, cultural tourism, the way you have, you know, explained cultural tourism, it is so very necessary that, you know, the visitors who are coming there, our guests who are coming there need to be very responsible. Because, you know, uh, you just, you just, the way you spoke about it, the way you said, you know, that, you know, people, they haven't migrated from their village. It is not only that economy that has stopped them. Economy is probably the last thing that has stopped them in the village. But it is the pride that has stopped them in their village. This is the pride that has, you know, made a happy family. So I think with this kind of rural tourism, it is time when we when we start uh, start, you know, the Bhutan way talking about gross national happiness, which is very so very important to keep the culture, to keep the nature, to conserve the nature, it is so very important. So this is where, you know, tourism plays the major role. And this is what we talk about responsibility. So when we talk about responsible tourism, you know, this is something uh, what, what we brought it from the West again, in spite of having everything with us, we brought it from the West again. And we described responsible tourism as better places to live in and, places, and, and better places to visit. So better places to live in and visit means, you know, creating the place for the, for the host, a better place where the host is living. Then only we can make it a better place to visit. So which is, you know, already explained into our culture. Very often in India, Nepal and other places, we say Atithi Deva Bhava. We, we speak about this word, you know, Atithi Deva Bhava, like guest is our God. But we often don't speak the other three lines before that. Pita Deva Bhava means father is our God. Mata Deva Bhava, mother is our God. Acharya Deva Bhava, my teacher is my God. So if I can keep these three people well in my society, in my house, in my village, if we can keep them well, that means my society is living well. Then only it becomes a place for Atithi Deva Bhava. It becomes, you know, the guest becomes our God. So, you know, responsible tourism is so well explained into the entire Indian philosophy, into our entire, uh, means, uh, into our entire you know, uh, Indian uh, uh, mindset that we don't need to re-describe responsible uh, tourism in, in some other way, some very Western way. So this is where responsible tourism comes from. And this is what we want our guests also to be, because our guests should know that they are gods for us. They are our gods because the, their behavior should be, you know, a very godly behavior. They shouldn't behave in a style that, you know, that gives us a bad impression to the host, to the village host that, you know, this is what a city person is like. This is what a guest is like. This is what a visitor is like. So we have to go away from this, you know, far away from this, this one and get back to our old tradition. Even the guests have to slowly learn how, how to, you know, match to this tradition, how to get involved with this tradition, which means 
they have to educate themselves to be responsible tourists. So, because until and unless we cannot have responsible tourists, we cannot have responsible destinations. We cannot have responsible force. So it is so very necessary that in our policy from our school days into the urban areas, we should start teaching responsible uh, tourism, how to be responsible tourists for the urban population themselves from the school life. Like if moral science can be a part of the school, if environmental science can be a part of the school education, why not responsible tourism as a part of the education? Because if we have responsible tourism as a part of the education, then in the next 20 years, we'll be having wonderful and extraordinary responsible tourists who would know how to visit our villages, how to go to our villages, how to respect the culture over there, how to respect the tradition over there. So let's start looking at responsible tourism from that point of view, from, from a policy to implementation from a from point of view, from an age-old tradition to the modern point of view. You know, this is what, you know, is going to save our tradition, protect our tradition, which is fast going away with, in this so-called consumerism world. So this is, I think, is the need of the time. And when we talk about responsible tourism, you know, in the, in the rural context, we have to understand, as I told you, the village needs to be, the host needs to be responsible. And how can the host be responsible is by bringing back their tradition, because each and every of our tradition is connected to healing. If you're working with soil, it is connected to healing. If you're a shepherd going into the backyard forest, it is healing you because, you know, people across in Korea, in Japan and the rest of the world heal themselves through forest walks, heal themselves to the, you know, forest. And so this is already there in, into the different type of lifestyles into the villages. So these have to be brought back. So if a village is actually healing, then we can create a healing village for the visitor also and involve them into into the into the village itself so that is also a way of responsible tourism because you don't get to activate your senses in a city you only listen to car horns honking shouts making up buildings you do, you forget that what the nature sounds like so you have forgotten your you know sense of hearing wherever you see you see you know billboards you see big boards you see built up things so you have forgotten what your eyes want to see even the smell you have forgotten what the smell would be like from nature. So we have forgotten the sense of smell. We have forgotten the sense of taste because we are so much used to fast food, to the food which is not made for you, which is made for everyone and served to you in the, in the big brand name. So you have forgotten our taste buds altogether. We have forgotten our, our sense of touch because whatever we touch is so metallic, is, is so industrial that we have forgotten the natural touch that we have. And when we forget these five senses, we forget uh, how our sixth sense would work. And if our sixth sense doesn't work, you know, you cannot be a traveler. Exactly. So you have to start working this out and start connecting it to our rural part of the India. And this is how you become a traveler. And this is how we can be responsible tourists uh, more than anything else. So this was a little bit of, you know, uh, mantra for all those who are listening to me and listening to both of us, you know. Hey. The way we can reach out to the world. As, as you were, I mean, I was talking about cultural, you talked about uh, responsible. I thought this is very important for me also to show, uh, uh, say, there are uh, 16, 17 communities in Darjeeling. Lepcha, Newar, Sherpa, Darjeeling, Kalimpong, Kami, Damai, Tamal, Tibetan. And, you know, all these people have their own culture. And yes. they are extremely... Uh, uh, eager to host the guests, but our tour operators, travel agents also need to realize that one cannot go to Darjeeling, Kalimpong, but has never seen the cultures of these 17 communities. So responsibility also has to come from the tourism stakeholders. That's a very important part. Also. Very rightly said. Yes, yes. We need the industry to be responsible. Exactly. Very rightly said. And, and also, in case of culture, very important, let's say when there is a, a two o'clock after lunch, just don't go there and expect a bowl to sing for your guests. Rather, uh, uh, have the respect to the artist. What time do they practice? What time do they sing? And they will love to sing. And thirdly, do not expect that, you know, all the artists will wear a tarpan or a this, that. You know, don't make it glossy. This is not a glossy tourism. This is authentic, traditional, beautiful cultures, what world needs to see, what world wants to see. 
So let uh, respect be responsible towards the villages. Before before I go to the Baud, Baud sir will be coming any moment. Uh, you know, I think one of the very important topics of tourism in the rural development, because today is a, a day for that, that tourism and rural development. And I thank India Tourism for hosting this particular thing. And also UNWTO for taking up this. Uh, uh, and uh, But one of the major thing here is that uh, I think one has to remember it, all, all of us, that in this particular uh, uh, tourism community has to be in the nucleus of it. Now, yes, yes. Uh, this particular uh, thing that, you know, the community in the nucleus of tourism, not as a bystander, uh, I think that's very important, Raj, that here, uh, if you allow me, I will show you a two minutes of video. Please, uh, you must, you must actually. Because yes. there I can bring in the whole of Bengal scenario and how, what has been the role of everybody and how it has impacted. Shoham, if you can bring in the video, please. High potential rural artist communities have not developed the business tools to engage markets, resulting in slow death of their unique art forms. Banglanatuk.com's Art for Life program proven in West Bengal transforms artist communities into thriving micro-enterprises, impacting artist, art form and district. Nine years after inception of Art for Life, in 2013, the Department of MSME, Government of West Bengal, adopted Art for Life and partnered with UNESCO to develop 10 rural craft hubs, benefiting 3,000 rural traditional handicraft artists across 10 districts of West Bengal. The success of the project led to expansion of the initiative to rural craft and cultural hubs, involving an additional 12,000 beneficiaries across 15 districts of West Bengal. 26 art form transformations have had 100% success, doubling artists, primarily impacting and empowering women, increasing income two and a half times, and reducing migrations. Low income art forms shrunk from 38% to 15%, while high income grew from nothing to 26%. More than 90% of artists now have a bank account. More than half have a new or renovated house. 77% of these with sanitation and 100% electrified. Almost every artist is formally trained on the art form. 30% are digitally aware and 38% of the next generation are now proud of and involved in the art form. The village is now a hub for international workshops and collaborations and six art forms have geographical indication status. Tourism is now an integral part of the program. Banglanatak.com has a hundred member core team in place to scale this repeatable program through partnerships in different states. See, calendarizing festival is a very important part. So all these festivals, rural festivals were calendarized. We started the festivals in 2010, almost after seven years of work. But this festival, this, this will be the first year that we won't be able to hold the festivals. And 2004, I started with this Art for Life. 2013 is the first year when the government of West Bengal came forward in creating, in partnering with UNESCO to develop rural tourism. UNESCO gave us the national partnership and the international advisory role in their in intangible community in 2011. Even WTO gave us the uh, global uh, partnership that is in 2015 when the ICH thing. But more important here is that in entire approach, community as I was mentioning the, uh, uh, before also, See, if you see all art forms, be it is a handicraft, be it is a visual art form, be it is a performing art form. Actually, audience, visitors, we have seen, and you have seen 130,000 visitors have visited these villages. And entire benefit actually reaches the community. Not only, only in their, through their performance, but even the local guide. It is them. Because they know. Because when you are whenever responsible tourism also is very important, the aspect that when it is a village, it is a living village. So, 
That means somebody's, my daughter may not be well that day. So only a local person will know, only an artist. So he or she will take the visitor accordingly. So private public within a village marking that area. So that's why an assembly point and thus Wisdom of Khadi with the resource centers have been developed, actually have evolved as the uh, uh, assembly point. And in this entire approach of community driven, we have seen how the pride factor comes in more and it has touched, it has worked on the ethical, it has worked on the responsible and community led tourism. So with this uh, small uh, brief, uh, I'll say- Amitabha, I would just like to add to what you have said. Uh, what is very important to understand is uh, our village lives on this commune. Because this sense of commune is, has to be very strong. That is what describes a village. Uh, whereas in the cities, you know, we are not much dependent on each other, even the, the neighbors do not know each other. But where, whereas in a village, with every occasion, with every festival, with anything happening within the family, you know, the entire village comes together as one family, which is very important, uh, you know, when we talk about commune. So this community participation, if we, if we really want to make sure, you know, tourism has to be, rural tourism has to be made successful, we have to confirm community participation, maybe the, uh, you know, the uh, economical beneficiaries should be, could be uh, only a handful, but the entire village being part of this part of the tourism, which is very important and their participation is very important. That is what makes a very successful, you know, uh, rural tourism venture. Yes. So this has to be understood also by our, you know, the, the, the entrepreneurs in tourism. They have to understand that, uh, that just only, you know, investing into a homestay, in isolation doesn't help in, in, in developing rural tourism. <clears throat> it has to come from the commune. The local school has to be involved. The local, you know, uh, the, the farmers have to be in, involved, you know. So all this put together, you know, creates that commune for tourism also. So this is what I feel, you know, why community tourism or the community participation in rural tourism is so important. Yes, please. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, this is precisely the point that uh, I was mentioning and you very nicely, as you always do, very nicely put forward <laughs> your points because I started saying the Guru and, uh, uh, and uh, it is really uh, all of us are extremely happy. And of course, I've been uh, telling everybody that, you know, if Raj gets involved more into the cultural tourism, I think rural cultural tourism and if India tourism gets uh, its um, uh, hand extended, support extended to it, it will be a wonderful thing. Because uh, I see, I mean, other than West Bengal, I have been working in Bihar and other places and also recently in Rajasthan, uh, in the deserts. And as we see that, you know, entire place, uh, the, the rural people, they are extremely keen that to be part of this wonderful journey of tourism. And here, but there, the nucleus has to be community. I think that is a very, very major shift in the uh, uh, eyes of tourism that needs to come through if tourism needs to be uh, really. Uh, I have a small five, six photographs I wanted to show it. Show please, please, you must. Yes. See, here, uh, uh, show, go to the first one, please. Yeah. Uh, see that this one, this lady, this couple from France is visiting Nanur and their entire thing is uh, on the Katha. And even you will be surprised that you know now uh, Tachkira goes so many times to France. <laughs> Um, for different residency. And this is the relationship that she has developed with, with her visitors. I think this is very important. There's a storyteller from Sweden. He came here and after that, whenever, and he's in, in Notungram. Notungram is in Bardoman, uh, Purva Bardoman, and Notungram is basically the wooden doll village. Uh, and it's a lovely village, about 60 families, and uh, they all work on the wooden doll. Uh, Pecha, the owl, and other things. And this, uh, um, the storyteller visits in different, different villages. And he made a story and he actually presented that in Sweden. And see, from that word of mouth, again, many visitors came. So that's why these are very important visitors for our forums. Always one needs to remember that they are not travel agents, but you know, or tour ops, but they are very strong word of mouth. So, uh, this is uh, four Irish uh, persons visited uh, uh, Rina Dash Baul. So Shantiniketan is famous for many things, including Rabindranath Tagore. But 
also it is a very important place for Baul. And that's how Rina Dash Baul's home is now a, a destination for almost all the uh, people who love it. Yeah, next. Uh, and this is where the Joyred Kenduli, all the, the, where the live is getting disconnected, uh, the video, this is the place uh, where uh, all the entire team is there. And uh, Joydeep, again, everybody knows that the biggest uh, Baul Mela happens in January. I don't think, I don't know if this year it will be held or not. Yeah. Next, please. Yeah. And this is the Golbhanga, uh, the Fakir's village uh, uh, in uh, uh, Nadia, Kurimpur, and bordering Bangladesh. And this is where a Danish team came into, uh, uh, and uh, they were collaborating with them uh, in their Mela. And uh, this is uh, the Potuchitu. You can see Shorno and other th other people uh, in the, uh, doing this in the last Potuchitu village, uh, Mela. Mm. And this is Shundurban. We missed out on Shundurban, another very important place. And Shundurban, there are almost 900 artists leave. And that is the responsible tourism group from the world. They visited Shundurban to see how the artists are getting benefited. And uh, uh, this is the Bon Bibin Pala. Uh, as well as uh, the Jumu dance and the Bhatiali. The right-hand man is the master uh, the, known as, uh, uh, and he is uh, a fantastic Bhatiali. He himself is a boatman and is the Bhatiali singer. There are almost 100 Bhatiali artists, around 500 Bon Bibit Pala uh, artists, and rest are Jumu artists in different islands of Shundurban. So I thought I would just share this info. Uh, this is wonderful, yes. I, I, this is so, so, so very important. important. You know, like in Bengal, there are almost about 2,500 Baus. And Baus talk about a philosophy where they say no caste, no creed, no religion, but it's a humanity. They love to do that. And uh, today, uh, one of the best places of Baul, the origin, that is Joydev Kenduli. We talked about rural, the mantra for the, and especially in the new normal scenario, it is important that we see the rural tourism as a way forward. And I certainly like to thank both UNWTO as well as India Tourism uh, to hold this topic. And uh, as regional director is also with us here. And uh, I will request Shohom to show me, uh, give me three, three photos because how, uh, see the, how the rural Bengal is also capturing this the new way a uh, rural way. Uh, Durga Puja is coming up, all of us are know, will know, I mean, know about it. But if you look at uh, Tepantar Theatre Village, uh, they are holding uh, October 22 to 26, and uh, which has capacity for 180. They have actually given only for 60. And uh, this is a wonderful way to be responsible as well as to hold the new tourism in this new normal scenario. And uh, in that particular place, uh, uh, Tepantar, I have sh uh, shown Tepantar before. Uh, so I, I thought I will share this information that you know even the rural India is actually uh, going into this direction for this. Okay, so uh, with this, and uh, they are getting this developed as well as uh, uh, mm, uh, the newspapers, the media is also giving a lot of importance to this. So with this, uh, thank you, Raj, and over to Raj and uh, our regional director, Shatnik. Thank you very much, Amitabha, for this wonderful, I would say, uh, more than three-hour session. It's more than a, you know, uh, Bollywood movie, uh, which is almost one of the, some of the very long Bollywood movies that happened. And it is so interesting that, you know, from the Facebook pages that we have been counting, there have been uh, 10,000 plus people who have been watching us uh, online from across the world, which is a very interesting factor. People, a lot of people uh, who are into culture, cultural tourism, and as you said, intangible uh, heritage, they are all watching us and wanting to know that what uh, Bangladesh.com, uh, Association for Conservation and Tourism, with uh, India Tourism and the Ministry of Tourism, the regional office in Kolkata, they are doing. And you know, at this point of time, the entire world is actually waiting to visit, to visit our rural places because this is these are the places where they can find isolation. These are the places where they can you know find back themselves within them. 
uh, through the nature, through the lifestyles of the rural people, they can find themselves. And so this is the only way, uh, you know, rural tourism is the only way that tourism can go ahead at this moment. And this is here to stay. So we need to find new ways. It is organizations like uh, Bangladesh.com and Association for Conservation and Tourism who has to find out new ways and new programs for the visitors, for, for how long we can keep them into a village. And more than anything that we are talking about, you know, tourism, uh, we should talk about, you know, how they can remain well, how they can remain healed and how they can uh, remain fit into by staying into these villages. So let us call this program more as de-urbanization or getting back to your roots. So uh, this is what we can always do and we can tell the world that we are here to teach you sustainability and here we are to take you uh, from from the disease of urbanization, we are going to de-urbanize you, which is more than necessary at this point of time. Thank you uh, very much, Avidavo. Thank you very much, India Tourism, Sagnik Ji, Sayak Ji, for giving us this opportunity to, to talk to the world on rural tourism on this very special day, which is the World Tourism Day, Vishwa Paritan Divas. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you very much.